For Practice Update, I'm Dr. Farzana Hafizula. Today joining me, I have Dr. Manesh Mehta, Professor of Radiation Oncology at the University of Maryland. Dr. Mehta, thank you for joining me today. My pleasure. So we're going to talk about what's to come and bridging the gaps that we have here with regards to clinical trials and uh, brain tumor research. Let's talk about precision medicine and personalized advances, targeted treatment based on the individual rather than having a blanket standard of care treatment. What are your thoughts and what are some of the advances to come? Well, obviously finding specific targets in each individual patient's tumor has become the holy grail of oncology. Yes. And this has been very successful in, say, for example, non-small cell lung cancer. Unfortunately, in the neuro-oncology space, our successes have not been that great in finding individualized targetable mutations for which specific drugs can be utilized. This search continues, but there is another direction in which this personalization of therapy is beginning to emerge, and that's the utilization of immune checkpoint inhibitors. Mm -hmm. So immune checkpoint inhibitors have become the darling child of the oncology world in the last two to three years, especially with all the dramatic advances in melanoma. And they're beginning to find application in neuro-oncology Yes. new clinical trials and new concepts. Matrix metalloproteinase, you mentioned melanoma. Um, I think about that and isocitrate dehydrogenase, um, co-deletions, 1P, 19Q, et cetera. Can you tell me what else is on the horizon? So all of the molecular markers that you mentioned have now been shown to have significant prognostic implication in many brain tumors. And in some situations, they're even predictive of therapeutic benefit. Yes. It's quite likely that these molecular markers will become incorporated in future classifications of brain tumors, moving from histology-based sure. to molecular marker-based classification. And some of them, like IDH, might even provide us therapeutic avenues using IDH inhibitors in future practice. Fantastic. I know the World Health Organization classification scheme that you mentioned is, is based on the histology and bringing in the molecular signature of the tumor itself and using that to further classify these particular tumors will help, as you said. Um, gear treatment in the correct direction. What are your thoughts on when this is coming out? In particular for the lower grade gliomas, the grade 2 and the grade 3 gliomas, there is such a confluence in terms of the clinical outcomes for patients with similar molecular patterns that it's very likely that yes. the molecular pattern rather than the grade might become the future driver of a newer mm -hmm. classification. And such a classification is being worked on as we speak. So collaboration is important making sure that different specialties, not just in neuro-oncology, oncology, you know, um, radiation oncology, et cetera, imaging, but all come together to really have that personalized approach. Are there any other study designs that are being thought of now that might come to fruition a bit, little bit later down the road? Um, maybe not just using a retrospective review of the clinical trial data that we have now, but, you know, taking a, a new lens, a new approach to how we've approached some of the clinical trials for brain tumor research. Well, let me give you two examples that I think are uh, about to, to take off uh, yes. somewhat rapidly in the neuro-oncology space. The first is really the example of combining immune checkpoint inhibitors with radiation. Mm -hmm. It turns out that radiation, especially high-dose radiation, can be quite immunogenic by causing tumor cell death. Sure. And combining that with an immune checkpoint inhibitor that allows a sustained anti-tumor response to be maintained might be an innovative therapeutic avenue. And clinical trials based on this concept of combining radiation and immune checkpoint inhibitors are about to be launched, and these might be very intriguing to study. Fantastic. I know it's always significantly challenging sometimes to recruit the right number of patients, especially with the disease type. How has it been to collaborate among different groups and, you know, with the different clinical trials and designs that we have today, we need to have some good statistical power. In neuro-oncology, where we deal with tumors that are relatively uncommon compared to many of the other tumors that we see in the oncology space, Collaboration is crucial. Yes. So we have mounted transatlantic collaborations between Wonderful. cooperative groups in the U.S. as well as in, in Europe, and we're even looking at collaborations across the world Wonderful. to complete some of these trials. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for this practice update today. Thank you for joining us. I'm here with Dr. Manesh Mehta for Practice Update.